Welcome to the Surviving to Thriving podcast that helps women leaders in nonprofits get out of survival mode and thrive in both leadership and life. I'm your host, leadership development coach, Kathy Archer, and I help women leaders enjoy impactful leadership. I think it would be an understatement to say that 2020 has been an interesting year. But regardless of the year it is, it's incredibly important that we all take time to step back and do a little bit of a review of our year. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about why you need to do a review, how to do a review, and when to do a review. Because if you want to grow and develop as a leader, you need to continue to look back for lessons learned so you can move forward. So let's first talk about the why. Why do you need to do a review? The greatest leaders are continually growing. They're continually advancing, they're learning new things, they're developing things, and they are pointing themselves in a direction. Now, sometimes that direction is a certain skill or talent or a piece of knowledge. Other times it's something they're developing in themselves around You know, maybe you don't deal well with conflict and so you've been learning to do that. Or perhaps you're not great at public speaking and so you've been doing some work on public speaking. Or maybe it's technology. Maybe you had to figure out Zoom and how to navigate all of this online world this year. We've learned things and sometimes that's intentional and sometimes it's not. But the more intentional you are, the more you're going to grow in the way that you choose. And so part of looking back is looking back at the things that have happened and how they inform you going forward. So it's not to kind of grovel and make yourself feel bad. And it's not to kind of, you know, relive all the crappy stuff that happened and just put a little bow on the pretty stuff. But it's to look back in specific areas, specific ways, and to really dig for the nuggets that are there. In the training library, the membership site that I have, I have a whole course called Your Annual Analysis. And in it, we look at everything from who are your mentors, guides, and teachers? How did you align with your values this year? How was your work-life balance? What was the character traits that you were developing? You know, integrity, honesty, courageousness, uh, teamwork. What were the things you were developing? And how did you do? And so we take it all apart. And I'll put a link in the notes if you're interested in checking that out. And actually, there's also a free lesson from the annual analysis course. And again, I'll pop that link in the show notes. We dive deep in the course. You don't have to be in the course to start doing this work. You can start to look at, you know, where have I grown? How have I grown? Why have I grown? What implication has it going forward? So the first thing is, why do you do a review of the last year? It's to look for what you learned, how you grew, and to take those lessons and apply them going forward. Most of us set some goals of some shape or form in the new year, and we set some intentions. I'm going to come back and talk to you about being even more intentional about that in the new year. But when we start that process in January, just kind of from where we're at, we lose sight of a whole bunch of stuff that has happened. And when we can look back, we can go, oh, this happened. Let me give you an example. Most of us sort of look back at 2020 from about mid-March on. And we forget that there was two and a half months previous to the, the pandemic that, what were you doing? What things maybe have you forgotten about that you were intending to do or work on? Or maybe there was some incredible growth that you had or some achievement you made or some learning opportunity. So that's one way to kind of think about this is we miss things. So why you do it is so that you can grow and develop. How you do it is you sit down and again, you look at themes. So in the the annual analysis course, we look at things like how aligned was I with my values? who are my training coaches and mentors. And sometimes that's people online. Sometimes it's face to face. Sometimes people don't even know or they're not even alive. But where or who were you learning from? We look at, because we did the the course on your wellness at work and all of your your balance kind of work-life balance stuff. How did I do? 
And I get you to sort of, you know, evaluate that on so many different fronts. And that's what really helps you when you slow down and go, okay, how many nights do I actually work late? And you can start to kind of think about it and you can look back at your day timer and kind of scan through different time periods, or maybe you keep a journal or a notebook about your days. That's one good way to do it. You can look for things that have happened in your, your, your experience. You know, maybe there was key challenges you had with particular staff or a project, or there was things you overcame individually or as a team, make note of those. Maybe there was significant things that happened in your, in your life, marriage, birth, death, um, you know, those kinds of things really jump out moves, um, new car, yeah, whatever kind of things jump out, sometimes an illness plays a role. So we kind of pull all those things and we pull it together again in themes. And you and I often talk about, you know, the fundamentals. You know, how was my eating this year? Have I been physically active this year? Has my spirit been renewed? I mean, this work can be soul sucking. So have you renewed, done exercises or activities or things that have renewed your spirit? Uh, the um, breath work, have I been really finding time to slow down and self-reflect and just kind of chill out once in a while? Maybe you wanted to meditate. How, how, how effective have you been at meditating? So looking at all of those things. So why you do it? Take some lessons forward, get some perspective on your year. How you do it is you look at all the themes and you, you kind of make, I mean, put it on a piece of paper. For me, I like to chart it all out. I'm very visual. So I'll be using different colored pens and sticky notes and papers and have it all over the place. If you're more linear and need it kind of in a, in a uh, Google doc, go for that, do it that way, whatever works for you. And again, in the training library, I have worksheets in the annual analysis course that I actually have specific questions to help guide you through. So, so I'll be doing that as, as well. And then the third question is, when do you do it? Here's the, the key part. Don't wait for this to happen. Make sure you schedule some time for it to happen. You need a good chunk of time, an hour at least probably to sit down. Sometimes it can be done over two or three time periods so that you can, uh, you know, maybe you just don't have a big chunk of time, but it also gives you some time to think. And once you start sort of planting those seeds in your mind, you'll be like, oh yeah, that happened there or that happened there. And make sure, again, you have time to go back through calendars, journals, ask other people around you, what, what were significant things that happened this year? And you can look your email, scan back through your email or your texts. Who are you texting? Where were you going? What were you doing? That will jog your memory. I keep a, a, a book or a journal or a day timer that has not, not like a di dear diary kind of thing, but just significant things that happened. And I can track you know, for me, we have not had family supper on a Sunday night since, oh yeah, mid-March. And so that's one of the things I go, okay, so connections have been strained. How have I been creative about, about building connections? What have I done to make sure that I'm staying connected? What did I find were the most effective ways of doing that? What didn't work? And again, those are all lessons that you can take going forward. Your 2020 year in review is the whole year not just since the pandemic hit. It's important to look back and really start to be more intentional about where you're going. Like I say, in January, we'll start to develop goals around being more intentional. But let's say, for example, for me, I've been really working on my character development and understanding the character traits, what traits are most effective in leadership and how you know everyday traits apply to that. And one of the things that I've really learned this year, and I, I have a documented decision after decision, is how decision making grows your character. That's one of the huge themes that will that has emerged for me in 2020. The decisions I make around my family, my health, my uh, connections, the work I'm doing, COVID decisions, the decision to, to podcast, Every single tiny decision grows my character because on every decision you make on either side of every decision is two very important values, if, especially if the, the higher you're feeling the stickiness of making the decision and you're struggling and, and there's tension and you're just uncomfortable making the decision. I've learned, and this goes back to 
again, I'll put the link in the notes, the free lesson from the annual analysis, annual analysis courses around your values. And so when I'm struggling with a decision, one of the things I know I now need to do, and this is because I've documented this this year and played with it and, and um, struggled with it, is I need to identify the two opposing values. What's going on here? And so, for example, you know, do you have people over for supper on Christmas Day? Okay, the value I have is family and connection, but I also have a strong value around honesty and the uh, health and safety. I have those values, the values around, I don't like to break rules. So those are two opposing values or a, a series of opposing values. If I'm going to make that decision, I have to sit down and weigh those values and really look at them and figure out how important it is what, you know, where am I willing to go? I was talking with my granddaughter yesterday about bending rules and she's, she's eight. And she's like, what does bending a rule mean? Is that like bending your elbow? And I thought, oh, brilliant question. And I struggled to answer it to her. So I was trying to say, well, it's like stretching rules. And, and it's interesting to start thinking as a leader, every single decision you make impacts those around you and impacts your character development. Do I want to be known as a leader who bends the rules all the time? Oh, interesting. Maybe I do. Maybe that's okay with me. For another person, maybe it's not. But your character development comes back to your reputation. So again, that's one of the big themes I've had this year is what kind of a person do I want to be? How am I showing up? And the decisions I make, everyday tiny little decisions, will have implications on the type of person I'm going to be. So let's back up and review. It's time, my dear, to do a bit of a review of 2020. Look back at the lessons you've learned so that you can use those lessons going forward. Take a look at some different themes, take a look at different parts of your life, be sort of an investigative researcher around what's happened over the last few months, and then make sure you schedule some time to do it, to sit down, and actually do a deeper dive into what's going on or what went on, why it went on, what incredible things happened, what challenging things happened, and how you're going to use that information to point you forward. Because it's when you use that information to continue to grow and develop and advance and further yourself and become a stronger person that you move from surviving to thriving in both your leadership and life. Go make the rest of your day awesome, my dear. If you found today's episode helpful, then you are going to love the training library. Many women leaders in nonprofits wish that they had a coach or a mentor to help them, but they don't believe that they or their organization can afford it. Oh, but you can. Inside of the training library membership site, you will not only get access to affordable and easily accessible ongoing personal and professional development training, you will also have access to a leadership coach at your fingertips. That way, when you hit those inevitable challenges that leadership will bring your way, you'll have both the resources and the support to navigate your way through them with confidence, composure, and while keeping your integrity intact. To find out more, head to kathyarcher.com slash library. If you are enjoying the show, I'd love it if you could leave me a comment or a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks for listening. Go make the rest of your day awesome.